There are two women in my audience today who had no idea I would be talking about them, but in my opinion, they are the kind of people we can all learn from. They're educators from Brooklyn, New York, in a community where only 4% of the kids go to college. Students enter their middle school unable to read. They come from homes where the homes sometimes have no food, nothing for them to eat, and yet 93% of their seniors from last year are currently in college. <laughs> Natasha and Cheryl, come on down. Hi. <laughs> You're Cheryl, you're Natasha. Yes. yes. Hi. And How you're are Ellen. You? I know. You're Ellen. Yes. I know. For real, like you're I, really her. I am, I am me. <laughs> okay. Yes. Hello. Oh my Hi. God. Hi. Okay, you didn't think you were going to be no, here. We, no. I mean, thought you'd be here, but not here. Yeah. Okay. No. But y'all are amazing. So I want you to, I know about it, but I want you to tell everybody why you started uh, this school. You actually started the school. Yes. Wow. So I was the director at the Police Athletic League Mikio Center in Red Hook. And working there, we had hundreds of kids in our programs, and every one of them wanted to be successful. But not one of them was receiving a solid foundation in education. And my epiphany came when one of my scholars went on a college tour. And he came back and said, "Miss Campbell, I got in. But I knew he wasn't going. He said, I'm not going. And it's because he couldn't pass a fifth grade tape test, but he was a senior in high school. And at that moment, I knew it wasn't enough to run a community center. It was time to make sure that every child that wanted to go to college could. Wow. So, <laughs> so you, and you're the principal. Yes, and uh, what made you decide to, you obviously were friends first. So why did you decide to be a principal at that school? Well, well, Ellen, you should definitely come out and see us first and foremost. So okay. that's your official invitation. Okay. Uh, and um, these kids are just amazing. I've got to tell you, once you meet them, you fall in love with them. They can do absolutely anything. They make you feel like you can also do anything. These kids are, are again, they go for the stars. They go for the stars. And no matter what is happening uh, at home, um, no matter what they've gone through, they never give up. They're just absolutely amazing. And so it was great to, to go and, and work with these kids. Because you know what I said? I said, you know, if not me, then who? I've had an opportunity to work with these kids for since the opening of the school as a consultant and now the principal. And it's just really an amazing thing to do. And this, the, the school's mission for these students is to go to college, right? Yes. To go to college, to excel in college, and to graduate from college. And how many people from last year are in college right now. So 93% of our first graduating class is currently enrolled in college. Which was last year. 93%. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean. And, yeah. and this year, you're trying to make it 100%. Yes. yes, absolutely. Right. Now, I mean, and you, it just, it breaks my heart when you hear the stories that these kids, as I said, they don't have anything to eat sometimes. Yep. They don't have homes even yes. to go home to. So all they have is school. All they have, you must have amazing staff. We have the most incredible staff. They come early, they stay late. Like 6.30 in the morning? 6.30 yeah. in the morning. Till like the 11 at night. Yes. Uh, Miss Caleb. Don't wait, don't say that. Because you're not supposed to be in the building that late. No. no. <laughs> I'm saying if I was there, that's yeah, the right. but, but, yeah. but no, you're not. No, nobody is no, in your no building. There, right. I'm just saying that's what our hours are. Right. Um, <laughs> let's talk about the community that the school is in. So we are in the Red Hook section of Brooklyn, and it is one of Brooklyn's most underserved communities. 4% of the adults have attained a college degree or gone to college. Um, over 28% of the children under the age of 16 live in poverty. Um, Red Hook is isolated. It's cut off by the Brooklyn Queens Expressway. And on one side of the hallway, on one side of the highway, you find beautiful multi-million dollar homes. And on the other side, you find one of New York City's largest housing development. And we serve the children that come from that housing development. We serve the children that aren't able to go to the best schools in the world. They aren't even able to go to the best schools in Brooklyn. And we serve those children daily. And, uh, you know, they're already in a, as you described that neighborhood, what, what they're living with just in their little world. Sure. But the world right now for all of us is a scary place. There's sure. so much going on. How do you keep them positive? How do you keep them focused? Well, number one, we don't hide what's happening. We want to educate them. We want to talk about what's happening. We want them, them to tell us how they feel. Uh, we want them to give a, give a voice. And we want them to know their voice is important and it needs to be heard. And the other part is we want to make certain that our school is like a family. So when you're here, you're safe. And we're going to keep you safe. And that's really important. 
All right, we're going to take a break. I have a little something for you. We'll be back. We're back with Natasha and Cheryl. And uh, while you were traveling here, we sent someone with a camera crew to your school, and uh, we have a little something to show you. Y'all are amazing. Y'all are amazing. Well, as you know, so you invited me to go see them. Obviously, I'm working all the time. I don't get to go too many places. But I want you to come back at some point with uh, some students that, you know, we can't accommodate everybody. But we want you to come back. We want you to come back with some students because we want to keep telling your story. And we also have something for you. Our friends at Walmart, uh, they're committed to helping uh, communities they serve. And uh, they want to help you create more opportunities with a check for $25,000. <laughs> Every once in a while, a story finds its way to me that puts everything into perspective. And this is a letter that I want to share with you. Dear Ellen, my name is Eklis Ahmed. I am a refugee from Sudan. When I came to America 10 years ago, I didn't speak a word of English. On my first day of school, I got off at the wrong bus stop, and I was lost for eight hours. From that day on, I made it my mission to learn English. I stayed after school every day with my English teacher, and I would watch your show and memorize what you said, write it down, and try to learn from it. With so much negativity in the world, all I had to do was turn on your show and be happy for an hour. Today, I'm happy to say I graduated high school and college. Thank you, Ellen, for being there every step of the way. Love, Eklis. Eklis. Hi, Eklis. Hi. Uh, hi. Hi. <laughs> hi. 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 It's me. How are you? Uh, okay. Hi. Uh, hi. Oh uh, my God. You're gonna have to hold this. I'm too oh, tired. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks for your letter. It was oh. a beautiful letter. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, so why did you uh, write it? Why did you want to get that to me? I wanted to write it because I wanted to let you know how I felt. I was I was a senior in college and I was thinking beside my parents, who was the person that helped me get get here? Who was that person? And I couldn't think of anybody except for you. Wow. So I decided to write you a letter. Yeah. See? Well I got it. So your story is, is so inspiring. I mean, you live in Maine, right? I do. OK, but you grew up. How long were you in Sudan? I was in Sudan until the age of 12. Until 12? Yes. OK, and what was it like growing up there? Um, oh my god, my country is beautiful, my homeland. I lived in Khartoum, Sudan. Mm -hmm. Growing up, I had the most beautiful childhood with my friends, walking to school every morning, and just being a regular kid, that's what I remember. And then what happened? Why did you leave? Uh, my family had to leave. We have uh, an issue happening in my country. Maybe you know about the genocide that is in Darfur, yeah. and it's still happening as we speak. Yeah. So my, my parents wanted a better life for us, and they had to take us out of there. That must have been very confusing for you. To You probably weren't aware of the genocide yeah. that was going on. They just took you out to save you. Exactly. My yeah. parents didn't know what to do. But I know every parent wants safety, and they want the best for their kids. So, so we had to leave. And now that I'm older, I had to do more of my own research to find right. out why we had to go. So you watched my show, yeah. and, and you just, I mean, there's other shows on television. Why my show? <laughs> Why did I help you learn English? Oh my God, because your show is the like the funnest show on TV. And also because we didn't have cable, actually, to be honest. Uh. We, we, didn't, <laughs> we didn't have cable, so we had local channels, which was great. And yeah. the Ellen show was right at 4 o'clock. And I right. come from school at 3.30. So I had enough time from the bus to get home and watch the show. I think back then, I don't know what year you started watching me, but for a while, I would walk out and go, ka ka ka! That, <laughs> Did you think that was something that all Americans did? <laughs> no. You, okay. <laughs> My neighbors didn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I don't know why. I went through a phase of just doing that for a while. I'm shaking. <laughs> all right. So, so now you're uh, an English teacher. Yes. And you're uh, in college getting your master's degree. Yes, I, I work as a Make It Happen mentor and educator at Casco Bay High School, which is very beautiful. I love my students to death. I love all of them. And I wake up every morning with the biggest smile on my face yeah. because of them. 
Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. So you love teaching because you realize how important it is. It is. It is so important for me to be there for the students and for me to be a role model for them because when I was their age, I didn't have someone that was an immigrant from Africa, an immigrant who went through college and graduated yeah. and didn't speak English but now is in a classroom in front of them. So I wanted to give them that. Good for you. I think it's important for everybody to have an example, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, all right. <laughs> So you made this calendar. Yes, we did. And the calendar and all the proceeds, uh, explain what the calendar is. The calendar is called Celebrating Africa. And my students wanted to do something special and unique and different to celebrate about their culture, their beauty, where they grew up. And I. We and had you, pictures, yeah. It's great. You get to learn about all these different uh, places Countries. that nobody would, would really know anything about. Especially so, beautiful yeah. things. You learn about the beauty of their homes. Yeah. So you, uh, we're going to help you. We're going to sell this in the Ellen shop. Uh, there's Your story is amazing. And there's going to be, a, go to our website to find out more, because there's more to her story that I would love you to know about. Um, but we're going to sell uh, these calendars for you to help raise money. And yeah. you're doing, you have two jobs right now yes. to try to pay off your student debt. Yes. So this week, Shutterfly has been helping us pay off people's debt. They heard about your inspiring story. They want to pay off all of your student loans with a check for $22,000. Oh <laughs> you are so hilarious. When I saw that, I, I, I just, I, I've watched it so many times. I've sent it to everybody I know. <laughs> Portia and I have watched it over and over again. Your delivery is so hilarious. And so how did you, why did you decide to do that to your kids? Okay, first of all, you, I couldn't even believe that you watched it. So like, <laughs> thanks for liking it uh -huh. and sharing it. They just told me backstage, they're like, Ellen, watch your video. And she was cracking. I'm like, Ellen knows who I am. <laughs> And this is my life. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, I just, I don't know. What was the question? You're a teacher. <laughs> You're a fourth grade teacher. Yeah. And, and you decided on April Fool's or around that time to do that to your kids. <laughs> yeah. And um, is, do you play pranks on them a lot? Um, yes, I play pranks on the staff and the students quite a bit. Uh -huh. So I'll do anything. I just, I like to make sure the kids are having fun mm -hmm. and like what they're doing. So I'll do different pranks. Um, or fun activities to get them going. Uh -huh. So I have a, we have a class pet snake. It's a ball python. And my teaching partner, Erica, who is amazing, I'll knock on her door and just have the snake in my hand and be like, hey. <laughs> and she'll scream and run away. So you like to, to do that to a lot of, but first of all, I think that's really cool because your kids are what, 10 years old? They're in fourth grade. Yeah, so they're nine turning 10. And it's a title one school. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think it's so cool that you're making class interesting and fun and that you would, because they're gonna remember you, you know? That's the kind of teacher, I don't know if you're teaching them anything, but I think it's good <laughs> that you're funny. <laughs> but I Well, mean, see, that's the thing though is, my whole philosophy with it is I can make it fun and if they're laughing and they're enjoying it, yeah. if they're laughing, they're going to remember it. So yeah. like, that's why we, I do it. And did the, they really were taking it seriously because you could hear them in the background going, oh, <laughs> like was, was any, like anybody smart enough right away to go, oh, he's, this is not real. Okay. So I have one student and this guy is kind of like, he's my sharp, my sharp number. So I'm, I'm giving the test and about the third letter, he's looking up at me and he's like, uh huh. <laughs> And uh, so when he did that, I'm like, please, Henry, don't, 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 don't ruin this. And he didn't. And he just looked at me. He's like, okay, Mr. D. Yeah, I know what you're doing, but I'm going to keep my mouth shut. And at the end of the test, he's like, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> me. Uh. And then, um, so then I gave the test and I told all the kids, you know, April Fools. And they were mad for a couple seconds, which is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We have to take a break. More with Joe after this. <laughs> Joe Dabrowski uh, from Michigan, who played that prank on his, uh, his fourth grade class, which is so funny. Um, I know as, as a lot of teachers, you use your own money to buy the kids all kinds of things in class, right? Yeah, well, I mean, most teachers do. You know, you use what you have, and then you make what you make, and you do what you do. So it's, that's really common in education. Yeah, especially a Title I school, you need to pitch in a lot. Yeah. Um, all right, well, I want to do something. Uh, I want to give you a gift, but I also want you to earn it. So. I'm gonna, I have a spelling bee for you, and so, okay. I know that. I know that, here you go.
Great. You're, you're going to fill this out. Okay. Okay. And the first word is Florfenborg. Whoops. Bjorn just spilled his Florfenborg. 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 And Alan, what is the region of origin with that one? That is Chinese. It's Chinese? Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Florfenborg. Gotcha. All right. The second word is wah wah wooey. If you're not careful around a chainsaw, you might chop off your wah wah wooey. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And then the third word is Shutterfly. Shutterfly cares about supporting teachers who are sharing life's joys, so they want to give you this check for $10,000. <laughs> And I know you're going to use this money to help your kids, so I don't want you to do that. This goes to you. So I want to give you another check for $10,000 for Oakland Elementary School. Yeah. Thank you. What would make someone want to move from California to become a middle school teacher in one of the poorest areas of Baltimore, Maryland? Take a look. It's going to be a mess already. I know, because we surprised you. You didn't know you were going to be on I the show. I had no idea until minutes ago. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, by the way, you're going to sit in that chair that you're watching right now. I yeah. couldn't handle it. Well, handle you're it. awesome. You're, Thank you're you. amazing. I mean, Thank you. the kids uh, are amazing. Really, it's you're the amazing. Kids. It's all the kids. So, um, I, and, and you know, I love teachers, and, and you say that teaching there has changed you. How so? Um, I've been teaching for five years now, and it has shaped the way I view the entire world. It's shaped me as a person. It's helped me understand patience and resilience, and the honor to teach children every day is something that is just unbelievable that I've been given that great honor. And how, how, do, you, how do you motivate them? So it's a 30% dropout rate, is that right? In, in the community that Yeah, we in the work community. With. So how do you motivate them? How do you keep them interested? It's all about opening doors uh, for our students and giving them points of access that they might not normally have, whether it's meeting someone they wouldn't normally get to meet, going somewhere they wouldn't normally get to go. And I believe the more access points we can give them, uh, the better experience they'll have. So what are, what are the biggest challenges uh, facing you in, in City Springs? I, yeah. Access to opportunities. You know, it's, it's 2017 in America, and we have kids who don't have equal access to opportunities. And <laughs> I get very emotional about that, because it, it's, it's not fair. It's yeah. not fair that we aren't able to always provide enough access to resources, enough books for our students, yeah. enough field trips that they can go on. And then so access to opportunities is a huge challenge that we face every day. And your, goal, your goals for your students are what? Well, my short-term goal is to get them those opportunities. Mm -hmm. yeah, meeting a city councilman, the state's attorney, you know, came in and visited them. So meeting people who will change their lives for the better. Mm -hmm. And then long-term, it's to have them give back to Baltimore in, mm -hmm. in the way that suits them best. You know, Chantel wants to be a veterinarian and wants to open a veterinarian hospital in Baltimore because she says there's stray dogs and cats that need my help here. Or the students want to become lawyers or doctors, and they don't want to do it across the world or across the country. They they want to do it in their community. Yeah. And that just that's just amazing for me. Well, you're just amazing, is what it is. You're just amazing. Um, all right, we have to take a break. When we come back. We have a little surprise. We'll be back. We're back with Wyatt or Mr. O, and his mom's in the audience, and you didn't even know she was going to be I here. I had no idea. So yeah, what a what a great kid you raised. He's a he's a good guy. Um, all right. So when you hear, we just watched the tape before you came out about the. Uh, your students and, and what they want to be when they grow up, uh, you know, it, it, must, it, it must make you think, well, then I have to continue to do this yeah. because they have to actually, this, she has to become a vet. It's so true, right? What happens in classrooms today impacts what happens in the world tomorrow. Like, I, I honestly believe that. If yes. you fill your classroom with love today, you're going to fill the world with love tomorrow. Yeah. And so, <laughs> it, That's it's it. amazing. That's so great. And so, and so true, so true. Well, thanks to Cisco Video Technology, we're going to check in with Jeannie, who is with some of your students right now. And uh, hi. Oh, my God. Hey, everybody. Oh, oh here, here's a latecomer. All oh, right. That's Kane. Hi, uh, Kane. Oh, hi, my Kane. God. Hi, Kane. Hi. Hi, everybody. All right, so I wanted to ask you guys what Mr. O means to you. So tell me what he means to you. 
To me, Mr. O, Mr. O is family, and I've been here since kindergarten, and, and him and this school really helped me understand that what I do now will impact my future. Mr. O, to me, is very trustworthy. I can trust him with all my issues and challenges that I go through at home, and he gives such great advice that I don't have to go through those challenges anymore. So, so it must mean everything to you to know you have this guy in your corner and that he wants to see you succeed. That must really help you. Yes. It means, it means everything to me. Um, that Mr. O has my back, and he's always here. And Mr. O is helping me achieve my big dream and um, rewrite history in our own way and show that people is more to Baltimore than meets the eye. Um, Mr. O, he's very important to me because I, th- I don't have the support system at home. Like, when I come from school and go home, I don't, like, really have no one there. So to have, like, Mr. O there at school in the morning, and, like, it's just very supportive. And it's, like, I I appreciate it a lot. And this is why we all love him, because he's just very supportive. I love him. I love him so much. All right, well. Uh, uh. So... Shutterfly cares about supporting schools in need, and they want to give you, uh, your school, a check for $25,000. So I think they have it there. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Emily came to the United States from Guatemala when she was 15 years old with only a sixth grade education, and now she teaches English and is changing the lives of her students every day. Come on down, Emily. And here she is. Hi. Hi. I heard you were in the audience. So, yeah, that's a microphone. You can talk right into that. Oh, okay. That's, that's what it is. Yeah, okay. you, did, you did not expect to be here, so no. big surprise. I was over there dancing. I'm just out of breath. Yeah. yeah. All right. So um, your story is amazing. Tell everyone Thank how you. you immigrated, how you got here. Yeah, I was 15 years old when my mother decided to bring us to Guatemala. She was already here. So I was 13 when she left us in Guatemala. So she left you. You're 13, and then how many I siblings? I was 13. I have four siblings. And they, how old were they? Uh, well, I was 13. They were 11. Seven, nine, five, and three. Okay, so you're 13 years old, and for two years you're raising them. Yes, by we yourself. built a little shack in my neighbor's backyard, right? And that's where we lived from 13 a to years. 15 years yes. old. Okay, so at 15, then she says, "I have enough money, and you can come." Yeah, she sent a smuggler to bring us here. Uh huh. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, we got busted at the airport. Uh huh. <laughs> Because yeah. the passports won't. It was, uh, yeah, undocumented. Yeah. So yeah. then how did you get in? Uh, my grandmother was here. She was an American citizen. Uh-huh. She went to the airport and claimed us mm-hmm. as her grandchildren. So we were able to stay here. Okay, and so I hear that you learned English watching my show and Friends. Yes! Okay. Yes! Okay, oh so... Yes. Well... Yes. So were you just walking up to people saying, we'll be right back? I mean, like... <laughs> No, it was just it was just fun. When you're learning a second language, when you have so much energy and you're watching somebody just talking and interacting with other people, that's, you just get that and you learn from it. Right. So, um, and I think that, that probably, you know, now you're teaching kids uh, English as a second language, yes. right? Yes. And your, your whole background probably influences how you teach. Oh, yes, I do. Yeah, when I came here, um, it was like they forced for me to learn English, and which is, there's nothing wrong with that. I think this is the language we speak in America. Right. But they kind of forgot to uh, work on my native language and work on my culture. So that's what I do at my school. Right. I bring literature where my students can read in their native language. I make sure that they, they, they value their culture as much as I do mine. And where is the school? It's Irvin Elementary School in Concord, okay. North Carolina. North Carolina. Yes. Okay. They, the students sound amazing. Yes, I love them. Yeah. I love them. You yes. want to say hi to them right now? Because Jeannie is there. What? Let's, uh, let's see how Jeannie's doing with everybody. <laughs> How's everybody doing there, Jeannie? Oh my gosh, Ellen, we are so excited! Oh These fans have been so thrilled all day to do 
this for you, Mrs. Francis. And I actually have one of your students, David, here, and he wanted to say something to you. What did you want to tell your teacher? Thank you for um, teaching me to speak English and showing me the right path and be with me all along. All right, we have one more surprise after this. We'll take a break. We're back with Emily and the students at uh, WM Irving Irvin Elementary School. Uh, and Emily, there's somebody who wanted to meet you. He's the CEO and founder of Chibani. Hamdi, come on out here. So, uh, Hamdi, you came here. You have a similar story. You came here at the in the same year, 1994, 94, yeah. right? And the only English you spoke was, I am Hamdi, I am from Turkey. And I love football. And I love football. Oh. <laughs> Soccer, you know. Soccer, that's what football is for, yeah, for you, it. yes. I, I watched the wrong show, so her English is much better than mine. I see. <laughs> see? That's that's glad. Had you watched my show. I watched Sunfield. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is that how you learned English? Yeah, you watch TV, you yeah. watch movies, yeah. and, and of course, uh, what you've done is amazing. And I want to remember my teachers. I took ESL classes uh, at uh, SUNY Albany. And, and that's where teachers like yourself um, and taught me how to speak. Yeah. So if I am speaking well, it's their work. If I'm not, it's my fault. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. The Chibani Foundation wants to support uh, your school's backpack program, and they want to give you, Chibani wants to give you $100,000. <laughs> Amazing guy, you're yes, you're a you. good good man. I okay, it. so I understand your students and your family are excited that you're here. Yes, we love Ellen. I mean, my my parents are here. They love Ellen. My grandma is probably wa hey grandma. She's probably <laughs> watching me. They watch Ellen too. They know who's on there. So hi grandma. It's Ellen. Yes. Oh. yes. <laughs> That's so cool. All right, so tell everybody about your school. So um, it's a Title I school. I'm about 350 students. Um, I work in the early childhood education, so um, pre-K three to five uh, to kindergarten. So about three to five years old. Um, and, and it's pretty much like a safe haven for us. I mean, they, they get to come in and they know when we're in school, it's a great place for them, it's a safe place for them, and we're gonna learn to have fun. Yeah, it's a safe haven because, well, yeah, that's what, that's what you hope that all schools are, not yes. all schools are that. Yeah, I mean, we, it's, it's a different kind of neighborhood. My kids go through things that we probably couldn't imagine. I mean, it's crime, crime ridden, uh, poverty. Sometimes we're at recess, we might hear gunshots and gotta go inside, so for them to be able to, come inside and come in my class and come in that school and they know that we're okay in here and we're gonna be, we're gonna be good and we're gonna have some fun. Um, that's, that's what I wanna provide to them. And okay, so you're providing all that and then you decided to add on top of that the pampering day. Yes, yes, yes. How did yes. that come up? Um, I, just, I just know my kids' stories. I mean, I know a lot of my, my parents may work multiple jobs. They don't have the time to take their kids to get uh, their hair done or the nails or the haircuts. Um, sometimes they might have the resources and the money, so I just wanted to, wanted to find a way where I can bring that to them, and I know what it does for them. I know how I feel when I get a haircut. I see you got your hair done, I know how you feel. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> I just, I wanted them to have that same joy and feel that same joy, so I wanted to bring that to them, and I was glad that we were able to. And how did you put that together? You must have reached out to people. Yes, I mean, I reached out to a lot of people in the, in the community, um, reached out to my friends and my resources, um, and just had them come in and, and, and provide, and, and they all said yes, and they were able to, to help me out, and, Bring smiles on my kids' faces. Yeah, I mean, the kids' reactions, it's, that's precious. Yes. All right. So you call your kids your family? Yes, I mean, they're, they're, they're my students, but they're literally my nieces, my nephews, my sons, my daughters, my little cousins. I mean, w whatever, whatever that, that realm is, I'm that to them, and I, I, I love being that to them. I mean, it's, it's, it's much more than just a teacher-student thing. I'm, I care about them outside of school. I'm, I'm going to their games on the weekends. I'm, I'm picking them up. I'm, I'm at the cheerleading competitions. Um, they, they could come kick it with me. We go to Dave & Buster's, Chuck E. Cheese, like, they my friends. So, I mean, it's literally every single realm that, that I can be. Um, for my kids, I want to be that. How lucky are they to have a teacher like you? Thank That's you. amazing. Thank you. Thank you. All right, more with Azel after this. We'll be back. We're back with the DC teacher, Azel Prather, and uh, your students sound Amazing, so of course I wanted to meet some of them, so come on out, kids. That's crazy. Hello there. Yeah. Look at your hair, how good it looks. What you say? Thank you! You are welcome. Okay, tell me your name. Larry. 
Lyric? Amar! Amar! Journey! <laughs> journey. Journey, all right. Lyric, Amar, Journey. Okay, do you want to tell me why you like this man so much? Yes! Hold on, go, go down the whole list. Tell them all, tell them all the reasons. <laughs> tell them the whole list. Just how to dance. I do, I do, we do yeah, dance. Yeah, how to dance, I can't wait to see that. What else we do on my journey? We do anything else? Uh, we she make sure we're happy every day. Oh, that is. Oh, that that's is. good, make that sure you're too. happy every day. That's, that's, oh, that's the most important thing. Hey, listen, is this your first time to um, be on a plane? Yeah! Oh, how was that? Fun! Yeah. What'd you like about it? What, what, what y'all see on the plane? Uh, I saw an airplane. Okay, we was on one. What'd you see? I seen you out you the window. You shouldn't be seeing one that I, close. I, I, I seen uh, the city. Okay. The city? I saw the clouds. The clouds, yeah, the, up there. Um, and uh, now you're staying in a hotel. What's the hotel like? Fun. Yeah? yeah it's very fun. What's, what's fun about it? Uh, what y'all keep asking about? Go to where? The pool! Oh, yeah, the pool. All right, you got pampered. What was your most fun part of, about getting pampered? My, my nails. nails. Yeah, the nails. My hair. Your, my hair. Yeah. My it, nails. It, it's all my hair, my nails. Um, <laughs> you are uh, a good man, as I said. You do so many things. You walk the students home. You take care yeah. of them on weekends. You go to the sporting events. You constantly pay out of your pocket, which so many teachers do, to help your students and their families buy clothes, shoes, groceries. Yeah. You help Santa deliver gifts to all 342 students at yep. your school. Instead of fixing your car, which is currently in the shop, you spent seven thousand dollars to open a foundation to yeah. help your students. Yeah, I mean, I didn't, I didn't realize how big, uh, how much a nonprofit really costs. But uh, <laughs> I knew, I, I knew by doing it, I'll be able to reach more people, and more people will be able to, right. to help me out and donate. So, yeah, I mean, you do what you got to do in, in order. They. Sure. We're going to win. Instead of, instead of fixing your car. Sure. All right, well, I am partnering with Hyundai to celebrate people who make life better for their communities. And do that. they want to make your life even better with a new Hyundai sure. Sonata. Yep. Like this. I like this oh too. Oh my god. Sonata is sleek and stylish and it can park itself with a touch of a button. And we also want to help you see. So I want I want you to see. Look at the trunk. There's so much space. That's crazy. Back here. That's crazy. Come on. No. We want to give you a foundation. Is this for real? This for real. Are you for real? <laughs> Are Thank you, for you real? so much. This is crazy. All right.